These squash bugs are out of control. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I'm Marcy. And we want to welcome you to our channel. If this is the first time you're here, thanks for joining. We appreciate it. If you haven't already, there's a little subscribe button right down there. But what we're going to talk about today is pests in your garden. One of the biggest issues we've had this year is with our squash plants and dealing with the squash bugs and eggs. And now we look like we have some kind of mildew or something. So I, I, I don't know. But we got a few things to try and we're gonna bring you guys along and hopefully we can all learn something together. So one of the big things we've been dealing with is squash bugs. So we've got, uh, of course, the full size squash bug, fully formed squash bug, but the eggs and the, like, the things that hatch out of the eggs are equally disgusting and problematic. <laughs> so one of the things we'd read about uh, getting the squash bug eggs off the plant duct tape. Uh, I, we have been just kind of scraping them off with our fingernail, but it, I don't know if it bothers Lance as much, but getting those squash bug eggs up underneath my fingernails, it, it weirds me out. I'm just going to say it's weird for me. So when I saw somebody mentioning using duct tape, I'm like, that's for me. So that's what I've been doing. So take a peel, uh, peel a piece of duct tape off. <laughs> I have purple, so <laughs> that's what we got. Then you're on a hunt for eggs. And um, I, I can spot these things a mile away, Lance will tell you. Um, I can just see them. But I came out and sat, saw several spots, so we're going to go hit, hit those now. Um, here's a small little piece of them. Normally they're a much bigger pocket, and I've got one that's a much bigger pocket than this. But if you just lay the duct tape on there, apply a little pressure, they pop right off. See that? Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that sometimes it also takes a little bit of the leaf. I think the trade-off is worth it. You don't want the squash bug egg. If you, if, you know, the best thing you can do is prevention. Getting the eggs off, then you don't have the squash bugs themselves. Here's another one. It's unusual to find them on the front of the leaves. It's, it, I've rarely seen them there, but here we go. Some right here on the front of the leaf. So again, apply duct tape, a little pressure, I see we're getting some of the leaf, but that's okay. And eggs. Voila. Of course, the place that you see them more often is, uh, I'll show you on a leaf over here, but is more up in the, on the back and up near the vein of the leaf. And I, it is a lot harder to get them from that configuration. But here's a big pocket of those. And the reason why that's a little bit trickier is this keeps you from getting the duct tape down into that corner. But I mean, those gots to go. That's <laughs> a lot of squash bug eggs. So we will work those until we get them all out. Because again, prevention, that's, that's the key. So once again, apply duct tape, peel back. And you can see those ones that are right up inside of the, the stem, they're still there. So I'll have to work a little bit harder to get all of those off, but you don't want to walk away from that until you've really got them all <laughs> hooked into the duct tape. And what I really like about the duct tape is then when I've got it, got that one holder on right there, it's got to go right there and right there. Okay. So then once you've got all the eggs kind of on the, and this is great for catching the little, uh, the things that hatch out of those eggs when they first hatch and they have those creepy little spidery looking things this will pick those right up real good too then when you're all done fold up the duct tape give them a good smush just out of spite if nothing else <laughs> and throw it away
So here's that little baby stage. I, I know there's a name for it. I just can't remember what it is. But we're just gonna. Sorry, guys. Ew. So ew. So this is what we've been finding on our plants here. This kind of mildewy substance. We kind of researched it a little bit. Here's another one that's pretty, pretty heavily. And it went from how to cure it anywhere from spraying milk to uh, baking it? soda, baking soda, dish soap, dish soap, um, that uh, sodium, bar uh, sodium, uh, potassium bicarbonate. Yeah, potassium bicarbonate. And we found some stuff at uh, Home Depot that's supposed to help with that plus some other mildewy kind of blight looking kind of things. So we're gonna spray it on here and hopefully it's gonna help. So what we found out about this powdery mildew stuff, it's kind of a fungus oriented kind of spore like substance. And the spores, once it actually grows and actually spores out, it's actually carried through the wind. So it could affect the rest of your plants that are nearby if it's acceptable to that or acceptable. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna spray it to make sure that not only this, but we may spray some other things around it just to make sure everything's covered. All right, so we got some Be Safe 3-in-1 Garden Spray. It's insecticide, fungicide, and uh, miticide. So it's supposed to help with, uh, supposed to kill aphids, white flies, spider mites, fungus gnats, some other stuff. Uh, supposed to control the powdery mildew, uh, downy mildew, black spot, greasy spot, and more as listed there. And it's good for everything, and it's bee friendly, and you can actually uh, spray and harvest on the same day. And it's a three ounces to one gallon mixture. So in our little device here, our little ortho dial and spray, I just have it to the three ounce. And then I just put however how much I want in here. And then when I turn on the water, it's gonna mix it at that three ounces to a gallon ratio. So one of the things we learned about dealing with the squash, number one, is to cut them back often. Uh, we've probably cut those things, we almost times. felt like massacring them <laughs> three or four times. But they and, come back every time. But they come back strong. every time strong, and now they're growing outside the bed and, and heading for the ground. So that's going to be fun dealing, yeah. trying to deal with the bugs. Well, when you cut them back, you can, first of all, there's less leaves to check yep. for. Less leaves. And you can just see down into the plant structure a little bit more you can see those squash bugs and when it's yeah. completely filled with leaves it's just hard really yeah. really hard and it's so many leaves yeah and, and check. For, yeah and for those who've never grown squash squash is kind of prickly oh yeah and it, it makes me Spiny. kind you of feel get, like i'm breaking out and you get little and... of the spines like stuck in your fingers sometimes yeah, yeah. It's, it's nasty it, it's amazing that you know just a, it just is a testament to how gross squash bugs are that they'd want to live on that i know right <laughs> And if, trust me, if zucchini and squash didn't taste so good, we wouldn't be rolling <laughs> it. Wouldn't be worth it. But it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And the one other thing that we've uh, dealt with with uh, squash and zucchini plants, again, most of our big trouble have occurred right over yep. here with that, is a little bit of in blossom rot. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, but I feel like we've gotten on top of that. I think you, so too. And, and what did you do to, to work on that? So I just took a, a gallon of water and crushed up some uh, tums and just shook it up, make sure it was all mixed in there, and just kind of poured it on the bottom of the, of the base of the plants. And just and uh, really let it soak in. Seen it since then. No, just been a couple of them, but not yeah, near as much as it was. Because like we there at the beginning, we had a lot of issues, especially with the zucchini plants. Yeah. And uh, even with some of the squash, we probably have lost probably 12 overall. Yeah, from in blossom rot. Yeah, if, yeah. if not, you know, not even counting the little ones. But now we haven't ones. seen that on our tomatoes. Yeah. But we actually uh, crushed up eggshells. Yep. And put them in the bottom of the hole we, we uh, dug out for the roots, uh, yep. for the tomato plants to go into. So maybe we'll do that with our squash and zucchini next year. Yeah, yeah, why not? If it helps with the calcium for it. Yeah, the calcium, that's what we figure is part of the problem with that in blossom rot. Yep. 
So we had a great uh, celebration. Yes. This past uh, weekend, Saturday, yep. with uh, Lance's mom and dad. They live up in uh, Northeast Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yep. Beautiful property up there. Huge property. Yep. How big, how big is that? 160 how, acres. Yeah, 160 acres out by a really beautiful lake in Northeast Oklahoma. Just kind of up the side of a mountain. Really great deer hunting area for um, yes. Lance and his dad and friends all, and family. Yep. Yeah, all uh, hunting but buddies. we spent, spent the day out there celebrating with them, some friends and family out that way, and it was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I think we had like 25, 30 people yeah, show up, so that's great. awesome. So his mom and dad just celebrated their 50th, and my mom and dad celebrated their 50th a few years ago. Yeah. So Lance and I are so blessed, really, yeah, really. to have grown up, <laughs> and still growing up, <laughs> yep. with, with parents who stuck together through thick and thin. Yep. So it hasn't always been easy, I know. For sure, not with my parents and not with his parents either. Yeah. Um, but what they've shown us is it's worth it. Yep, it's for worth sure. it to to struggle through those hard times. And now this coming week, this week, yep, this coming week. up, yep, on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Is our wedding anniversary, and we're up to 21. Woo! So we got a ways to go to 50, but we've had some good role models. So. Yes, definitely. And, Again, guys, thanks for coming out watching our video. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't caught us on Facebook and Instagram, the links are down below. Again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, right down there, you can click on that, ring that bell. And from our homestead to yours, have a blessed day, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Bye.